the Ritchie pirates, now prisoners, were shoved towards a massive cauldron set over a roaring fire. Panic-stricken, they watched as the tribe's warriors, armed and vigilant, encircled the pot. The tribe's members, without a hint of remorse, tossed food and red wine into the pot, ensuring that the grim spectacle would be as satisfying as it was horrifying. The pirates shrieked in terror as the reality of their situation sank in. The once proud crew, led by their unwitting lion, were now destined to become the main course in a nightmarish feast. As the flames danced higher and the pot bubbled menacingly, the desperate cries of the Ritchie pirates pierced the air, mingling with the rhythmic chants of the Kumate tribe. One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. Chapter 67. Soup. Hey, did you forget you inhaled poison? Deadly poison, Patty warned, as his friend added with urgency. And what are you planning to do by taking away the very man who tried to kill you? Despite his body's evident strain, Gin ignored their warnings. The battle commander raised his head to the open sky, and he addressed his rescuers. Sanji, when he wakes up, could you pass him this message? Sanji listened closely to his words. Let's meet again, out on the Grand Line. Watching him with narrowed eyes, the cook couldn't mask his disbelief. You're still gonna be a pirate? Patty's scoff followed, echoing his thoughts on the commander's stubbornness. But Gin only shrugged, as if the choice was as natural as breathing. When I think about it, there's nothing else that I want to do, he admitted. I guess before I realized it, Don Krieg's ambition became mine as well. His hand pressed against his side as he started coughing up blood. Gin! However, the commander kept standing and respectfully shared his thoughts. I might only have a few more hours to live, he managed, grimacing as he continued. So it might be a bit cowardly for me to make this decision only at the end of my life, but it's still good for me nonetheless. His voice grew steadier. I've decided that this time I'll do things of my own will in my own way. If I do that, I won't have a place to run away to, right? Loyal to the dawn, my ass. All I've been doing is using the Don's name as a shield to escape and hide away. A glimmer of something unreadable crossed Gin's face as he gave a faint, lopsided smile. As long as you're prepared, things like being scared of your enemies or getting hurt are nothing but useless worrying. That guy over there taught me it's better not to worry about any of that stuff. Sanji turned to his co-workers with a calm command in his eyes. Patty! Karn! Give them the boat we use to go out and buy ingredients. His words left the others in a state of shock. What? Are you retarded? Patty and Karn shouted in unison. Why the hell do we have to give a boat to the very pirates that attacked us? Those scum can swim away for all we care. How are we gonna buy food supplies if we give them our boat, you numbskull? Sanji didn't flinch, barking back with finality. Shut up and give them the damn boat already. Patty's grumbled response came low but simmered down with resignation. All right, you don't have to yell. His face reddened with frustration as he added under his breath, Why that son of a, I swear I'm going to kill that bastard one day, always ordering us around. Even as he spoke, both cooks turned on their heels, grumbling under their breaths as they ran away but he's inherited the owner's legendary kicks. If we're gonna get him, then now's our best chance since he's injured. Maybe if 15 of us cooks attack him while he's sleeping, then we just might win. Might? Luffy's eyes fluttered open, 
adjusting to the warm light of the Barati's upper deck. He laid on a surprisingly soft bed, surrounded by white bandages that wrapped around his arms and torso. Suddenly, he jolted upright. My hat! he shouted, eyes darting around with panic. Just a few feet away, Sanji leaned casually against the guard rail, exhaling a plume of smoke as he observed Luffy's frantic search. It's right there, isn't it? Sanji commented, confirming it was right in front of him the entire time. Oh, it is, he realized. So you woke up, did you now? The cook shared, watching the horizon. Sorry, but we've run out of more bandages. Luffy, undeterred, pulled the band-aid from his forehead, tossing it aside. Don't need it. I see. Curiosity flickered in Luffy's eyes as he asked, What happened to those guys? Sanji's voice was calm, almost grateful. They've left, he said firmly, thanks to you. The aftermath of the ongoing battle settled like waves, washing away the dust that was left behind. Memories of the commander's earlier remarks swirled in his mind as he shared these thoughts to the young pirate. The battle commander pointed to Luffy, who was blissfully asleep after his fight with Krieg. Gin couldn't help but smirk to himself. Calculating, cautious, hesitation and whatnot. When I look at him, all those things seem so stupid. Nearby, Patty and Karn maneuvered a supply boat through the floating restaurant. As the Krieg pirates rushed to board, the boat creaked under the weight of their collective haste. Panda Man did not like being cramped. The sight elicited worried glances from the crew. They feared the little vessel might buckle under their numbers and sink before it even set out. Gratitude swelled in Gin's chest as he shared his remarks to the cook. Thanks again. It's all right if I don't return this boat, right? Sanji grinned. If you have the balls to come back and return it, go ahead, you weakling. Some scary restaurant this is, he remarked, glancing as the pirates sailed away into the distance. As the Krieg pirates set off, the cooks erupted in cheers, praising their spirits high about their strength. Let's meet again out on the Grand Line is what Gin said before leaving. Cool, he said that to you? To you, dumbass, Sanji barked. Realization struck Luffy. That's right, I'm finally done with being an errand boy as of today, cause I made that promise with the old man. Right, congratulations, Luffy leaned upright, prompting. So then, you wanna, I ain't gonna be a pirate, Sanji replied his eyes still gazing peacefully at the sea. I'm gonna stay here and be a cook until the day that damn geezer acknowledges my cooking. Stumped, Luffy fell silent, processing Sanji's words. Okay, suit yourself, he muttered. Incidentally, the pirate stretched his hand towards Sanji's blue collar, only to hear the cook irritably resist. But your hand hasn't given up! Luffy took his time adjusting to standing then leapt onto the guardrails beside him. After something like that happening, I can't afford to leave even more, he explained. The cooks here are completely undependable, but I do want to go out to the Grand Line one of these days. Then let's go right now, Luffy exclaimed with excitement, but Sanji quickly shot him down. Not just yet, though, Sanji said, turning to face him. Hey, do you know about the All Blue? Luffy's confusion was evident. What? You've never heard of the Ocean of Miracles? Well, you see, in the All Blue, as Sanji passionately shared his dream of finding the All Blue, joy radiated from him as he kept talking about the magnificent ocean. Above them, Zeph watched, a smirk spreading across his face as he took in Sanji's blissful expression. Talking with such a stupidly wide grin on your face, idiot. Within the bustling confines of the Barati, the scent of freshly prepared food wafted through the air, mingling with the clatter of pots and pans. On the second floor, the din of laughter and banter gave way to the employee's dining room, where tensions simmered just beneath the surface. Time for some grub, you bastards! 
Hey, who's the one in charge of cooking today? A chef questioned, eyeing the dining room warily. Standing tall and proud, Patty crossed his arms. That'd be me. And me, Karn chimed in. Oh, the hellish duo? Guess it's nothing to look forward to then. Just shut your traps and eat, you boiled brain idiots, Patty boomed, silencing any further complaints. Just then, the door swung open, revealing Sanji and Luffy. Hey, where's our seats? Where's the food? Ignoring their presence, the cooks continued to devour their meals. There ain't no chairs for you, one of them chuckled. Just eat on the floor. No chairs? This is a restaurant, how's that freaking possible? Sanji said with annoyance. He and Luffy shrugged off their frustration and plopped down on the floor, trays of food in hand. Luffy glanced sideways. Something's strange about them. They're always strange, Sanji replied. Suddenly, Patty's booming voice cut through the chatter. Hey, who was the one in charge of making this morning's soup? Sanji raised his hand, pride evident in his tone. Oh, that'd be me. Pretty good, right? I made it especially- Without warning, Patty smashed the bowl of soup to the ground. How the hell am I supposed to pass this crap down my stomach? What is this, pig feed? He shouted. Taking offense, Luffy continued munching while Sanji shot up. His anger was just starting to boil. Hey, does proper human food not suit you, you damn raccoon? Patty stuck out his tongue in disdain. Ha, this is pure crap of the highest quality. Makes me want to puke. Did you put actual shit in this or what? Fuming, Sanji replied, I'm perfectly confident about my soup. Maybe it's your damn tongue that's the- At that moment, Karn spat it out with a loud, yuck. The other cooks, emboldened by Patty's reaction, stood and poured their bowls onto the floor. No way we can eat this filth. Just throw it out in terrible, just terrible. The hell do you think you're all doing? Sanji shouted. Standing firm with the chefs behind his back, Patty retorted. You being the assistant head chef was always just a sham. It's only because you've been here the longest. I'm sick of your violent ways. If something tastes bad, then it's my right to say it's bad. What did you- Before he could continue, a bowl of soup smashed behind him. Owner! Geezer! Zeph criticized the food in disappointment. What's with this disgusting soup? Is it supposed to taste like sludge or what? He pointed to the mess on the floor. We'd go out of business if we served this to the customers. Sanji dashed toward Zeph, grabbing his chef's uniform in a fit of anger. Don't joke with me, you damn geezer. How's this any different from the soup you make? Well, speak up. The soup I make? Don't get cocky. In a flash, Zeph delivered a punch to Sanji's jaw. The owner punched him? Patty shockingly exclaimed. The head chef held his fist, declaring, It's a hundred years too early for a little eggplant like you to be comparing my soup with yours. I've cooked all around the world. He didn't kick, but punched him instead. Both chefs glared at one another, tension crackling in the air. Damn it, Sanji shouted, his patience wearing thin. He then slammed the door behind him as he stormed outside. Taking his chance, Luffy slurped the soup Sanji had prepared for his co-workers. This soup's pretty good if you ask me, he shared with genuine appreciation. Yeah, we know, the other cooks replied, returning to their seats at the dining table. That was scary, he sure was stomping mad. Everyone here knows how good Sanji's cooking is. Zeph crossed his arms, acknowledging their sentiment. But if we didn't do that, that idiot would never listen to us. Hey, kid, he called out to Luffy. Would you mind taking that little eggplant with you? Take him to the Grand Line. It's his dream. Just outside, Sanji sat slouched against the doorframe, listening to the conversation to his surprise. In this stolen moment, he rested his head against his knees. No one noticed him. Yet his quiet despair was as loud as the bustling dining room beyond the door. That was more trouble than it was worth, Owner Zeff. The cooks, oblivious to his plight, continued to bicker. Hey, give me another helping of this soup. Me too.
I can hear you, you bastards.